Welcome everybody. This is the HIP Investor Ratings Portal uh, webinar. Uh, we're delighted that you're here. Uh, I'm Paul Herman here in San Francisco. Uh, on the phone uh, and around the country are members of the HIP team, including David Sugar, Anendo Khan, Fabian Wilskit, Nick Gower, Zachary Worthington, uh, Wantong Zheng. So uh, we're delighted that you have you here. Hopefully you have your copy of the HIP Investor book as well. That's a way to get to know all inside the HIP Investor ratings. And what we'll cover in this webinar uh, are the following things. Welcoming you here, an overview of HIP the firm, reviewing our HIP's uh, high-level HIP's ratings methodology. We'll show you and give you a tour uh, through the HIP ratings portal, which is very exciting, kickstarting HIP 2.0. Uh, answering your questions, and uh, then leaving suggestions for how to engage with HIP. Um, if you are going to ask questions on this webinar, live webinar, please use the Q&A box, and um, uh, feel free to adjust your screen uh, to full screen. Um, you'll see me in the video box uh, while I go through the slides, and then uh, we'll turn that off uh, when we go through the portal. Uh, so delighted to have you here. Ask any questions in the Q&A. Uh, and uh, Nick will uh, uh, get them uh, to us for in order to either reply or if we don't reply them, uh, we'll reply to them later. Um, so just to give you a quick uh, overview of uh, HIP the firm, um, we, uh, the HIP investor book is uh, published in, uh, uh, available on every continent through the library as well as uh, in university and uh, MBA um, curricula. Uh, HIP is now 12, in our 12th year. We have um, uh, 75,000 investment ratings, uh, covers more than 6,000 corporates and 59,000 uh, uni bond issuers, as well as a range of mutual funds and ETFs. Uh, our, we also have a second company called uh, HIP Investor that operates HIP Investment Strategies and fossil-free uh, portfolios. Uh, our clients include uh, wealth advisors and fund managers, as well as hedge funds, uh, college endowments, and some families and foundations. Um, and we've been part of the Newsweek Green Rankings with Corporate Nights for the years 2015, 2016, 2017. And we've been in the New York Times uh, and other publications, as you can see on the HIP website. Uh, because uh, we uh, can operate as an investment advisor, um, here's our disclosures and that we're an investment advisor and a registration. Everything that we're going to talk about is not an offer of securities. Remember that all investing has risks and past results are not indicative of future performance. Um, and that's what you'll find with any investment methodology. So today, the values and benefits of uh, using HIP ratings uh, are to one, analyze more risk, uh, to better understand the drivers of profit, and three, to capture potential uh, indicators of uh, future financial returns and lower financial future risk. And for wealth advisors and fund managers, this can help you uh, put ESG, uh, environmental social governance, and other impact factors uh, into your portfolio. Uh, so what's important about investing? Investing is important because it looks at future risk and future upside. Uh, in the S&P 500 today, these are statistics from Ocean Tomo over the past several decades, 84% of market value, so 84% of the stock market value of companies is intangible. It's actually not on the balance sheet. And those are factors like people as an asset and natural resource efficiency and good governance as well as transparency. And so these are knowable yet ignored factors that are not on the financial statements. Uh, and there are excerpts from the HIP Investor book on the HIP Investor site that you can read through and see examples. But some of the examples of these knowable yet ignored factors uh, in investing include customer satisfaction and employee retention. These are very important factors to running a business. But what's also important is how we use natural resources, oil, water, energy, as well as things like the gender diversity and ethnic diversity of a board and of your supply chain. And evaluating how exposed your uh, a company is to being sued. So when a company does something wrong, it's usually sued by customers or employees or uh, possibly even uh, governments on behalf of the environment. 
So this 84%, we like to focus on the HIP ratings as a 100 point rating, a zero to 100 rating. That helps you, just like you measure the financial performance of your portfolio, helps to measure the impact of your portfolio. And so that impact can be very high, closer to 100, a world that we all wanna live in with happy people and a sustainable environment that has high levels of ethics and trust. And closer to zero is a little bit more dystopian, uh, where there's uh, extractive behavior of people, extractive behavior uh, and destructive behavior uh, of the environment, uh, and really unethical or illegal behavior by companies. So these factors, what we found over the 12 years of uh, HIP Investor is that higher rated impacts, higher rated ESG, environmental social governance, and specifically higher rated HIP ratings, uh, correlate with stronger potential returns and lower future risk. And portfolios of companies and investments with low HIP ratings uh, frequently have lesser financial returns and more future risk. Uh, and so the full model, again, you can read more about this in the HIP Investor textbook, ebook, and audiobook, as well as the excerpts on site, as well as some of the videos that you might see of us presenting, or you may have seen us present in person at conferences wraps together a full model of trying to know investments in the best way possible. And that includes innovation in products and services, management practices uh, by people, and operating metrics uh, within nature. And these cover, based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the pillars of health, wealth, earth, equality, and trust. And that leads to impact and profit, can lead to impact and profit in your portfolio. And that's based on a comprehensive view of uh, scores of data sources that we use to build into dozens of metrics into these five pillars of health, wealth, earth, equality, and trust that lead to an overall impact rating. And what we found, uh, and we do this analysis uh, frequently, what we found in, um, uh, on an annual basis, on a multi-year basis, we look at this uh, quarterly to see how this is uh, correlating with financial returns is uh, this looks at all 6,000 plus companies that we are um, rating inside HIP. Buckets of companies with higher HIP ratings have higher return on equity, return on invested capital, and total shareholder return, including reinvested dividends. And buckets of companies that rate lower uh, or very low, not only lag in profit and return on equity and lag in return on invested capital, and lag in total shareholder return, you might even lose money. Uh, and we have an upcoming uh, fourth annual report with As You Sow, uh, working with As You Sow, to show that one of the factors that correlates strongly is overpaid CEOs. And you'll see the same relationship with uh, other sustainability factors, including overpaid CEOs. Another indication of future risk is in uh, applying to uh, muni bonds. And so what you'll see uh, when you look historically at defaults from uh, counties and cities uh, across the country is we went uh, and sought out the drivers of risk uh, back in the uh, times of default. And as you can see, we have a lead certified office here where unless people are walking around, the lights automatically go off. Um, and, uh, and what we found is low HIP ratings for muni bond issuers. So HIP investor is one of uh, the only um, uh, third party raters of impact in ESG, and we'll show you that in the portal. So essentially bring it all together. Uh, if in your portfolio or your client's portfolios or the portfolios you manage, you wanna do good and make money, uh, this is a way to both solve human, social, and environmental needs and seek risk-appropriate financial returns. So uh, before we get into the portal, just want to show you our coverage. So we cover 6,000. This is about to go on 7,000 corporations globally. You can see the breakdown both by country and by continent. Uh, in the U.S., more than 2,000 companies are rated. In South America, more than 100. In Brazil, uh, in Europe, where sustainability and impact and ESG is strong, you can see um, the coverage in each of those countries. Uh, countries like Russia uh, are only have uh, uh, some uh, sort of less, um, less coverage there as the uh, companies struggle to publish uh, and be more transparent. 
Uh, and then down in Australia, more than 500 country, uh, companies uh, uh, have uh, sufficient um, data to rate them on. In the muni bond area, uh, we actually cover more than 59,000 uh, issuers uh, across all of these sectors. So schools and community colleges and universities, as well as energy utilities, cities, counties and states, hospitals and housing agencies. And we continue to grow this list both on an issuer level as well as on an issuance level. And you'll see some of that in the portal uh, later as we are able to track green bonds uh, as well with the HIP rating. Um, so we're continually expanding this universe. And, uh, and if you have, uh, are personally interested in or have clients interested in place-based investing, uh, this can be one way to uh, do that. So the HIP ratings cover 195 sovereign countries. So if you're buying U.S. Treasuries, you can see the score. Uh, these are the scores in each of the countries that are color-coded. Green is better. Uh, red is lagging. Uh, this is a, based on a modified human development index that adds additional metrics. Uh, in the U.S., uh, especially for muni bonds that are issued in the U.S., this covers more uh, all 50 states. Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico, and then we also have adjusted ratings for green bonds in each of these locations. In K-12 school districts, we cover all 13,000 K-12 school districts. You can see uh, when you look at the district revenue per student, uh, higher income, higher district revenue uh, school districts may perform better, but there's a widespread. So this is the insight that we're bringing at HIP to show you uh, deep in, inside the stocks, bonds, and funds uh, that you're investing in, what is the impact that they're having, and what is the potential relationship to financial risk and return. And what we find in cities is that uh, low-income cities have higher proportions of women entrepreneurs. This may be important if you have a gender equality-focused portfolio. And, when you, and one of the examples is digging into water, we look at the water quality. So here in San Diego, you can see that we're looking at water safety and metering as uh, well as recycling of water. So overall, what we're bringing together is to a measure of HIP as a measure of impact, low or high impact, and that links to uh, financial risk and return, future risk and return. Uh, and that when you apply that to your portfolio, you have the ability to potentially strengthen it or make it more resilient. All right, so David Sugar here in San Francisco is going to drive through the portal, uh, and we'll have uh, some joint commentary along the way. Uh, but we're really excited to show you the uh, HIP as we uh, are now in our 12th year to show you HIP 2.0. Um, so David, over to you. Great. Um, so many of you have already signed up for a free trial. Some of you have started to expand your access. Uh, some of you have even signed up for a subscription. So you can see on the HIP website, uh, when you go to the hipinvestor.com website, on every page in the top right is the portal. Um, so that'll take you to a portal page and a free trial if you haven't yet signed up. Uh, and once you get inside, this uh, summary page refreshes your memory on the 0 to 100 HIP ratings that you see on the bottom right and refreshes your memory on the uh, linkages, to, potential linkages to financial risk and return. And on the website, of course, are book excerpts and other research on impact investing. So we're going to progress through the corporate section uh, of 6,000 corporates, then the muni bond section, then the fund portal, uh, and then end up in a portfolio summary. Uh, and if you have questions, go to the Q&A. All right, so David, uh, we're going to click through, I'm going to turn off the video here. We're going to click through uh, to the corporate ratings portal. Now, in the corporate ratings portal, under company name, you can pick, uh, you know, lots of us uh, like to track firms like, uh, I think David likes to use Apple, right? And, uh, and so because uh, we have all 6,000 companies, you might be trying to pick Apple, the, the company, or maybe Applied Materials, or Dr. Pepper's and Apple Group, since that has that in the beginning. Um, so you can search by company name or by ticker. Uh, in addition, um, and so you can see the tickers there to click into. Uh, under industry, these are the 110 industries uh, under the 10 to 11 sectors of the S&P. Uh, and this is, uh, really shows, uh, if you want to narrow down to have some diversification, um, can show you uh, at the 110 industry level and what's coming soon is the sector level to make sure you have a balanced, diversified uh, portfolio. 
You can also search by cap size, so you can see uh, large, small, and mid, uh, as well as micro caps, and on geography. <clears throat> so if you're investing internationally, uh, based on um, headquarters of the company, you can use these uh, geographies. So as you can see here, this is a full listing. Uh, if we scroll down to the bottom, this is a listing. We're showing you the full uh, list. I think we have, uh, uh, we've set this to, you can set this to 100 securities or 25 securities, however long you want your page to be. Uh, in this case, this is a full portal um, available by subscription. And so we have more than 6,000 companies uh, uh, globally that we're tracking. There should be 7,000 by the end of Q1. So at the top, uh, what's listed here at this summary level, you have the geography that the company is based in, you have the cap size, you have the industry, uh, the ticker, and in this case, SAP is not only listed in the US, it's also listed in Germany as the Deutsche Exchange. Um, so SAP is a big software company. Some of you may use it uh, in your large corporations that you're working in. And then the overall HIP rating. So this is the zero to 100 HIP rating. And you can see that the top rating for corporations is uh, 76. And so you might say, well, why not 100 if SAP is very good? So in, in the next column, you can see that relative to others in the software industry, SAP does have a 100 score. This is what we call the relative HIP score. But there's still opportunities for SAP to improve in impact and sustainability and environmental social governance or ESG. And that gap uh, to be participating in a fully sustainable economy is uh, the move from 76 to 100. Over the past uh, 10 years at uh, HIP, in, in the 10 years of history of ratings, we've seen companies actually stretch as high as the low 80s, um, but that uh, as we um, continue to refine the metrics that we look at, um, there's still a gap in a company being truly sustainable. Uh, now you might ask, and we'll show you later, what the average of the S&P 500 is. So that mix generally falls in the uh, high, uh, high 40s to low 50s. Um, and so what that says is uh, at least half and potentially more investments, if you hold a public company, it's being extractive in some way. It's being extractive about people, being extractive uh, with planet, uh, or being extractive of trust and the other hit factors. Um, okay, so that's uh, where we are. So we're going to dig into SAP uh, and show you what a high performing comp uh, company looks like. Uh, and then we'll pick a lower performing company, but that's actually, um, uh, so they give you a contract. Um, uh, and then one more thing is, uh, as you, you know, explore different companies and want to add them to your portfolio, on this right-hand side here, you'll see add to portfolio. And when you do that, you'll be able to add um, at the base level to three different portfolios. So those could be three different impact themes. Uh, they could be three different asset classes. Uh, they could be three different clients. Um, so it's up to you. Uh, our clients are able to add additional uh, models as well. So that's uh, flexible to add on to. All right, so what does uh, SAP look like? So, um, uh, so in SAP, what you'll see is we have the company name and ticker and industry, as well as the capitalization size and uh, headquarters location. Uh, and then to the right in the chart, you'll see 76%, 76.3, so one of the highest rated corporates. And then for the software industry and for its cap size uh, and for its geography, it's actually top rated. This is a very strong uh, impact and sustainability stock. And what we found in working with investors over the past 12 years at HIP is the, if you're really focused on sustainability and impact, you want to know this 76 number. What is the gap to becoming truly sustainable? But many uh, of us want to make sure that we're investing in the leaders. And so this 100 number uh, makes us feel comfortable that at least we're investing in the leaders by industry or those other factors. And so we include those as well. Again, as questions come up, please uh, put them in the uh, Q&A box. Uh, on pillars, uh, you can see the different um, uh, uh, pillars uh, here. So products and services. So what we've done for each of the 110 industries uh, and software rates of 95% um, is where companies have, they're in multiple industries. We do a blended weighted average. So this means that um, software is a more sustainable industry, a highly sustainable industry. Uh, the next category is management practices, then the health, wealth, earth equality, and trust pillars. 
And so you can see those scores, and so you're probably curious about what those are. The good news is they're all over 50, so they're generally net positive. And, um, and all this data comes from a variety of sources. So this comes from the companies themselves um, sharing uh, and publishing actual metrics. And what we focused on at HIP over the past 12 years is capturing quantitative impact and ESG performance, uh, blending in the management practices that support that, that show intentionality, and then also tracking companies that may not yet be reporting um, uh, show progress in their policies. And so hopefully policy leads to implementation, but at HIP, we believe in transparency equaling uh, the deepest uh, uh, sort of view on risk. Uh, and so data comes from companies, it comes from nonprofits, uh, like uh, and academia, like University of Michigan and their uh, customer satisfaction um, index. Uh, it also comes from government, looking at EPA and Environmental Protection Agency violations, OSHA, safety and health uh, violations. Um, so a mix of sources. Uh, so, uh, and so as we scroll down in the portal for each company, uh, you'll be able to see not only what goes into each of those pillars, the products and services pillar, the description of it, and this is a HIP rating of it. So this is not necessarily and not typically the source data. So we've collected all that internally. Um, and what we're showing you is the HIP rating at the metric level. So that SAP vision at 100%, they've built in the UN sustainability development goals into their vision and building them into their metrics. And so you can see high scores there. As we scroll down to the health pillar, the different metrics for the corporates uh, are access to healthcare, job safety, employee retention, employee satisfaction. So you can see that SAP rates very highly on employee satisfaction and retention. The ratio is not as high on things like job safety or customer satisfaction. That could be a gap in transparency, a gap in lack of publishing those metrics, or it could be a gap in performance. So that varies by company. So we're always willing to you know, answer questions on that for you as you search through the pillar and feel free to email us uh, at HIP Investor for questions that you have. In the wealth pillar, uh, we have employee access to stock options and employee pay. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, what's the level of CEO comp to average worker pay? You can see SAP ranks one of the uh, you know, most fairly paid CEOs relative to average worker pay. And we also track community development investment. This tends to be things like charitable contributions. Under the earth pillar, we have the energy efficiency, renewable power usage, greenhouse gas emissions, including carbon reductions, as well as waste and water. So for environmentally oriented portfolios, these might be important enough to you where you might want to search on the and check on the earth pillar characteristics and the metrics below those. Uh, under equality, of course, we look at board diversity. Um, Credit Suisse has published uh, several times that more gender diversity on the board can lead to higher financial performance, be correlated with higher financial performance. A uh, more recent study with uh, uh, University of North Carolina has shown that more diversity across the company, including the board, is actually positively correlated and causal of higher product innovation and uh, sort of uh, 50 to 100 percent product innovation improvements, uh, patented uh, increase in patents. We track women employees and women manager ratio. So again, these are not the actual uh, uh, source data. This is their relative performance. So SAP is above average on women managers and above average almost top quartile on women employees. Uh, the HRC score is a human rights campaign, so that's an LGBTQ metric uh, by the human rights campaign. Uh, it's done excellent work over the past decade uh, in bringing um, that to corporations. And then under the trust pillar, we have third-party certifications, uh, legal exposure and legal judgments, lobbying, and overall transparency. So this gives what we think is the most in-depth look at a company uh, available in an online portal um, uh, based on the most timely information. Um, so we're really excited to share this with you, uh, get your feedback on it, um, and see how you can use it to uh, build out a diversified portfolio, either of a handful of stocks. Some of you like to uh, uh, have portfolios of 30 to 50 stocks or to dig in what's inside that investment index that you might have. 
All right, let's take a look, a quick look at a lagging corporation and then we'll pause for additional questions on the corporate. David, do you want to flip over to Philips? So Philips 66 is in the oil and gas industry. Its ticker is PSX. It's a large cap. Some of you may go to them, uh, you know, their gas stations across the U.S. They also operate um, uh, refineries. Um, so here's an example of uh, not only uh, below 50 score, 27.9, but on a relative basis, uh, relative to other energy companies, oil and gas, uh, companies, as well as to other large cap companies and North American companies, um, they're lagging. Uh, and you can see this in the pillars. So you can see the products and services, they're ending up rated lower because they're in oil and gas production or transport or delivery. Um, so that's a mix of the different businesses that they're in. You can see that their management practices are starting to shift towards more sustainability. So one of the uh, HIP uh, scores that you'll see uh, coming later in 2018 is a momentum score. Are there companies who are um, shifting and going from low to high or medium to high or possibly backsliding? And then in the middle of that pillar, you can see the 5% pillar score. And so that's where the biggest gap is. And certainly in oil and gas, this is an important um, issue as a producer of fossil fuels. So if we scroll down to the metric scores in the earth pillar section, what you'll see in that section, in the earth pillar section, is uh, the greenhouse gas emissions rate at the bottom of the ratio. There's uh, no reported renewable power usage. Now, it may be that Philips 66 is using renewable power, uh, but uh, they're not yet uh, reporting it in a transparent way. So this is a way, again, if this might be in your portfolio um, and you're worried about climate change, climate action, fossil fuel intensity, or you're seeking a fossil fuel free portfolio, uh, you may want to see, you know, uh, what your exposure uh, to Philips 66 and others in that industry are. All right, so I'll pause for questions. Feel free to type your questions in the Q&A. Uh, Nick is uh, emceeing those and uh, we'll organize those. And uh, I think we covered where the data came from. Um, uh, and also when we clicked on add to portfolio, that could either be for a current portfolio or a model portfolio um, that you're you're seeking. So later on in the webinar, you'll see how you can compare uh, two different portfolios. All right, so um, let's start down the Muni area. If we see some questions rolling in, quick look. And um, you see some uh, additional questions. Uh, I'll just answer right now while we're on it. Um, <clears throat> So in terms of the currency of the, in how current are the ratings, um, we're collecting data as it becomes available. Frequently with sustainability and ESG information, this means annual updates. However, some companies report early in the year, some report late in the year. So what you should be finding in the portal is we are rating based on the latest available data that's transparent. Um, now, all of us, I think, uh, on this call are interested in getting more transparency and more frequency. And so this leads to, you know, how do we at HIP and with other um, of our clients and partners engage on the rating. We've used um, uh, through the power of the Newsweek Green Rankings, which actually many companies take very seriously. That's a chance to engage companies to at least get them to be transparent, to make sure their ratings are listed in Thomson Reuters and Bloomberg and other uh, data capture portals. Um, we also engage individually with companies. So for example, in a fossil fuel free portfolio that we um, implement in 401ks with partners like uh, Green Retirement, Timothy and Rose Yee, um, we found that one of the funds uh, that was fossil free by holdings, but not fossil free by intention, actually added a uh, actually added uh, a fossil company. And we sought to engage with that fund manager who happened to be at Fidelity, uh, and they chose not to engage with us. So we ended up selling that fund and replacing it with another. Um, uh, another question is, is historical data available or only current? Currently, it's a current. David, is there a specific time frame on the historical ratings being available? Like six months. Yeah, so by about mid-year or so, we'll have historical ratings so that you can see uh, trends along the way. Um, 
let's see. And then uh, we have questions about like access to use this. So we've created a mini version of this so you can see what's inside the rating. And, um, uh, and so this is built with pricing that you can see on the site. Uh, we have pricing built for advisors, which starts at $500 a month. Uh, we have data feeds that hedge funds use. So those start at $1,000 a month and uh, go up based on coverage and his, uh, history. Uh, and then we have enterprise versions starting at $4,000 a month that um, uh, you know, are flex with the number of users and the types of coverage that you see in the portal. Um, so we aspire to you know, also have this available as an everyday tool for everyday investors. So that's on our uh, product roadmap. Um, in the meantime, uh, this is intended for um, you know people who can afford uh, uh, the pricing that we described. Okay, uh, another question that popped up is: Are there any subjective or qualitative uh, assessments that go into the rating, or is it 100% data-driven and quantitative? So our intention with HIP from the very beginning of our founding 12 years ago has been to be as quantitative as possible, to not just listen to policy. You know, back in the day, British Petroleum said our policy is to be sustainable, but their practice was not. Wells Fargo has said our policy is to be ethical, but uh, you can see that that's not as they opened fraudulent uh, accounts for customers in the past. So we focus as much as possible on quantitative information uh, that is gatherable and measurable uh, and comparable to peers. Now, because there are gaps in quantitative information, we will also track things like yes, no answers to policy or certain criteria in policy uh, to help show that intention is emerging or becoming more prevalent. Um, so I think what you'll find is the majority of what we do is as quant as possible. Sometimes it's called quantum mental um, based on fundamentals and quantitative. Okay, so any other, let's see. All right, so then another question comes up is fossil fuel free. Um, so there's a great website called fossilfreefunds.org um, that is operated by As You Sow. Um, you can type in most fund tickers or fund names that are in your 401k or your portfolio. And they do an excellent job at asyousow.org on fossil free funds. Um, uh, on their Fossil Free Funds website. And so that's a resource um, to check. In if you were to say what companies might be fossil fuel free or not, that's where you can use the earth pillars uh, and metrics um, to look at that. Um, all right, and then somebody asked, do we, but I'll assume it's do you, analyze performance on a short-term or long-term basis? Um, so what we're looking at is um, uh, the latest available information on impact, sustainability, and ESG performance that is um, uh, incorporates, you might have seen, um, David, if you scroll down to the earth pillar again, carbon reductions. So what are year over year or multi-year reductions? We're developing a momentum score, so it helps to flow into this, um, uh, what you're asking about of changes over time, and so that you can see changes over time. Um, and then we're open, somebody's asked about other complementary metrics and ratings, uh, and what about HIP 3.0? <laughs> um, so our, our focus is essentially continue to incorporate as much available information about impact, net positive or net negative impact, by companies and muni bonds and the funds that hold stocks and bonds uh, and sovereigns, and to um, continue to boost transparency and to continue to test how it links to financial risk and financial return. And what you'll find uh, is that at least for all the HIP metrics that we track, uh, we do analysis frequently saying, um, does, does this impact metric not only represent doing good in the world, does it contribute to positive cash flow or reduce risk? And at least to date for our 12 years of doing this, all of our metrics have either a low, medium or high contribution to shareholder return or profit, or both. Um, so we've not yet found inverse relationships where doing more good hampers that. There may be examples in industries where that happens, or in sub-segments, but at the overall level, it does not appear to be happening. All right, and then a great question, and then uh, we'll uh, continue on to munis, just to be sensitive to uh, our hour-long time, uh, is 
some people have different definitions of ESG or sustainability. So, um, David, if you scroll back up to the pillars. Um, yeah, so sustainability, some people think of as just environmental. In HIP's definition, from the very beginning, we called it human impact uh, to not only incorporate human and social factors, but also environmental ones. Um, but the Earth uh, pillar uh, uh, maps to the E in ESG, and the trust pillar of HIP maps to the G in ESG. And what you'll find with HIP, and we're really proud of this because we designed HIP so that even, you know, my mom could understand it and relate to it, is that ESG is a term used in finance fields, but if you ask an everyday person, you know, about ESG, they're not going to get it. But if you ask a person, everyday person about their health or wealth or equality, uh, they can connect with that. They want equality. They want, you know, positive health. So uh, HIP maps, maps to ESG and that E maps to earth and G maps to trust and um, health, wealth, and equality are sort of more detailed on the social. All right, so great. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're moving on to the portfolio view and HIP scores. Wanted to make sure everybody had a, a grounding in the methodology and what's possible. And um, yeah, and so we'll march toward, we'll march forward. Um, so over to muni bonds, and then we'll go to funds and then portfolio. Uh, so what you see here, when you click into the Muni portfolio, you can search by name like you could on uh, corporates. Uh, you can search by sector. So um, these, the sectors that you see here are the macro sectors that we covered. And you can um, then search by subsector. So in education, there's K-12 to and community colleges, uh, as well as um, uh, universities. Um, and then uh, because in muni bond, sometimes being state specific is helpful, so you can search by state if you wanted a state specific portfolio. And then we also put in search by minimum HIP score. So you'll see as the portal evolves, um, uh, as we continue to evolve the portal, we'll let you uh, search by minimum overall HIP score and later, uh, coming soon, uh, search by minimum, uh, say, pillar rating. If there's any needs that you have that the portal isn't serving, please feel free to email us. Um, you know, we're, uh, we provide great service as well as uh, um, this uh, product. I'm so happy to answer those. All right, so what's an example of, uh, we showed you the world map and state maps of potential munis. Uh, you can see that they have, you know, not only the sectors and subsectors, but the uh, uh, overall HIP rating and subsector rating. These stretch up to 86%. Uh, Norway was in the news last week, um, so you can see that that actually is the highest rated country according to the HIP index and always rates highly in the UN Human Development Index. Um, uh, but let's show you some states. Let's see who are leading in laggard states. So David, if you click over um, to that, this is the state of uh, Vermont uh, is the highest rated state. And then what you'll see here is because we're rating issuers, we create an additional state rating uh, for the issuers of green bonds, uh, and in this case, New York and Connecticut and Washington. And what we're looking at there is making sure that the use of funds is focused on investing in uh, climate action and climate efficiency. Uh, we're hopeful that more and more metrics will be built into green bonds for actual greenhouse gas reductions, not just how you use the money or budget the money. And then actual rewards and penalties in the future for meeting or falling short of those goals. So that's happening today in the water sector. So Washington, D.C. Water has an environmental impact bond uh, that has rewards and penalties. So we hope that will, con that will continue to happen in the muni bond uh, space, and we're actually working actively to help spur that. All right, so if we look at, uh, let's look at Vermont. <clears throat> and um, so you can see Vermont, government sector, state subsector, the average state is uh, running about 50.5, right in that middle there, and Vermont is leading. Uh, and then you can see the different components, and in the muni sector, the different components uh, in each pillar uh, vary by each sector. So in uh, water utilities, health is higher, and in, um, uh, and in uh, states and uh, counties and cities, it's more balanced in running a, a full government operation. So in uh, Vermont, just for example, the, um, uh, under the health pillar, you can see things like the diabetes rate and obesity rate and violent crime, as well as high school graduation and bachelor's degree. Again, these are ratios based on the underlying source data. 
Uh, and so you can see that Vermonters are healthier. It's top decile for diabetes, 93%. Uh, it's uh, the lack of violent crime, uh, they rate highly, highly on. Um, health insurance coverage, they rate highly on. Um, uh, whereas in median income, it's closer to the average, closer to 50. And in housing affordability, it's actually uh, lagging um, at 36%. Um, under the Earth Pillar, we look at things like commuting and travel to work, as well as renewable energy standards. You can see Vermont is leading there at energy efficiency standards. And then the diversity uh, of uh, both wealth equality, as well as business entrepreneurship, which can help generate new revenue for the tax base, as well as opportunity for the people living and working there. Uh, as well as LGBT opportunity. All right, so that's Vermont. Let's look at the lowest rated state, which is uh, Mississippi. So Mississippi is a 32.9 relative to the state average, and uh, they have gaps in all the pillars. So, um, so as we scroll down, what we'll see is that Mississippi has some of the highest diabe diabetes and obesity rates. So these are bottom decile performance. Uh, we're going to color code these over time to make these easier to understand as well. Um, uh, and that the high school graduation and bachelor's degree is bottom third uh, versus other states. Uh, and part of that is driven by the high inequality. So the, gene, the inequality rating, the Gini index is bottom third. Uh, the good news is housing is affordable, but, um, uh, but unemployment and poverty and income uh, is very low. Uh, and there's no renewable energy standards in Mississippi yet, uh, even though there are some energy efficiency standards. And while wealth equality by race is better in Mississippi, given the diversity of Mississippi, uh, it's not as much by gender or LGBT or by business ownership. All right, so there's lots of rich complexity in the muni bond area. If you personally have a muni bond portfolio, or your clients do, this is a great way to test whether uh, the assumption that all munis are good or all um, government issued bonds are good by their mission. This actually shows you what the actual performance is, like we saw uh, when we looked at the K to 12 school scores, the wide dispersity. dispersity. Okay, dispersion, sorry. <clears throat> All right, so let's go over to the funds. Let's look at the funds uh, that we're tracking, and then we'll wrap up with the portfolio. Again, ask questions in the Q&A. If we don't cover them in the webinar, we can follow up with an email. Uh, so appreciate you being uh, so interactive and engaging. All right, so on the uh, funds, the, our list, uh, David, what do you have as the total number of funds there? Down below. Yeah, so we have five, more than 500 funds rated. We'll be adding in additional share classes of these funds. So you'll see that number grow so that you'll see both the institutional or individual or retirement share class of that fund. Um, and like the others, you'll see the ticker and the name um, and the overall HIP rating. And what you'll see is fixed income funds actually um, scoring higher than equity funds because the underlying bonds in those fixed income funds are scoring higher than the underlying equities in those funds. So some of the tension today from a impact perspective is governments and nonprofits and some investment grade corporates are issuing bonds that have higher impact ratings, uh, but that bonds generally have lower risk and hence lower return. So if you're seeking a high return strategy, um, there's some downward pressure on the impact that you can have because public companies still today are generally extractive or not yet fully sustainable. So that's some of the resolution that you need to discuss with yourself or your investment committee or your clients is what is the optimal mix of impact and risk and return. So we'll show you an example, and then uh, asset classes here. We have a variety of asset classes. So if you're uh, interested in particular asset classes, that um, you can use the drop-down menu here and go searching for including target date um, categories uh, or industry focuses like real estate. Um, uh, you can search specifically in those um, sectors. So let's take a look at a sample. <clears throat> Uh, we want to make sure and cover the, the funds and the portfolio in the final time. And uh, not only can you search by individual fund name or ticker, a Parnassus is a fund family. So in this case, 
you could search for a fun family name, Parnassus, Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock, Pax, Calvert. Um, and in this case, there's, uh, we have the Parnassus Fund in the middle there, uh, along with its Asia Fund and mid cap and small caps, as well as its fixed income. Uh, and Parnassus Endeavor Fund, which used to be called the uh, uh, Workplace Fund. Um, and so in the Parnassus Endeavor Fund, which is fossil free, by the way, <clears throat> you can see the name, the ticker, the overall rating. Uh, we'll get to the relative rating in a minute. Uh, the coverage is 100%. So that means all the equities in the Parnassus Fund have 100% coverage. Not all funds have the highest coverage. But our bias at HIP, again, being quantitative oriented is, we'll show you what the coverage ratio is and less coverage we think means more risk because those underlying investments are not reporting. We also show you the expense ratio and the uh, high level benchmarks. So in this case, the S&P 500. On the right hand side, side here, you see the roll up of the different pillars of the 100% coverage of all the holdings. Um, and you can see that uh, even for Parnassus, given the, the Endeavor Fund, even though it's fossil free, there's still a gap in some of the environmental uh, metrics. So again, that could be a uh, information gap from the companies not yet reporting, or it could be a performance gap. All right, so if we scroll down, we ask, all right, well, how does this uh, compare to an S&P 500 benchmark? The good news is on both an absolute basis and a relative basis, you can see that the Parnassus uh, Endeavor Institutional Fund uh, outperforms uh, the benchmark in all of these relative ratings. And then you'll also be able to see, you're also able to see the top 10 holdings. So uh, in this case, uh, the top weighted holdings include Qualcomm and Gilead Sciences, Mattel and VF. And so you can see their HIP ratings right there. And if you like, you can click on the details to go to the details of that company. All right, uh, feel free to type in questions in the Q&A. Um, and then, David, what's the next one? Yeah, so then uh, if you want to uh, add this to your portfolio, um, you can click on any of these screens on the stock, bond, or fund screen. Here are three portfolios. Uh, we're going to go over these three, but uh, you can name the portfolios anything you want. So we've named them after the... Uh, HIP 100 fossil fuel exclusion, as well as the uh, other ones we'll review in a moment. And you, that weight can be a percentage weight. It can be a dollar weight. Um, so if you want to type in the dollar values that you have, it'll auto uh, proportion the percentages, or you could type in, you know, a percentage. Uh, and you can also type in a decimal. Uh, you just need to type in the same type of weight across each of the uh, holdings that you have. So then you can add it. So let's look at some sample portfolios. Again, type in any questions in the Q&A. And, uh, and so at the portfolio viewer, uh, what uh, David and the team have built is uh, pretty great, I think. Uh, you can compare your three folios, or however many you end up having, uh, given your subscription. Um, you can compare them to each other. So here we have in the middle is the diversified, hip, fossil-free, portfolio, 80-20, uh, called it a model, it's a portfolio, and um, that's a mix of uh, mutual funds and ETFs that if you have a 401k, um, you can work with some of our 401k partners to get those included uh, in your, um, uh, potentially included in your 401k. Uh, you can also uh, invest direct with HIP, with our investment management company, and coming in Q1, you'll be able to invest on open invest in this HIP fossil free 80-20 model. So we're really excited about that. In addition, the two other strategies that you see here, the great places to work on the right hand side uh, and the HIP 100 fossil fuel um, strategy on the left hand side, um, you can invest in those on uh, brokers like Folio Institutional, uh, Charles Schwab, uh, and uh, coming soon, Open Invest. So what you see here is that these strategies are beating their benchmark, um, so that's good on both an absolute and relative basis. Your portfolio that you type in may or may not, so it's exciting to test. Um, then as you scroll down, you can see not only the graphs, but the actual, um, not only scores, but holdings counts. So that middle one of the HIP fossil-free funds is 21 funds. 
The other two are 42 stocks in the Great Places to Work and 69 stocks in the Fossil Free Hip 100. Um, that is negative screening, the Hip 100. And then uh, you can see the pillar ratings of the, in this case, the Fossil Free model. Um, and uh, so that uh, the health, well, earth, the quality trust. And so all the holdings in these funds are fossil free, but there are still gaps environmentally. Um, and so this is where we still have work to do to pressure companies to not only disclose and to improve their, uh, become more efficient in their greenhouse gases and water efficiency and other environmental factors. And then if you scroll below that, you can see a ratings distribution of the mix of scores, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And an asset allocation. Remember, this is an 80-20 asset allocation, so 20% is fixed income, and the other 80% is a mix of global equity, small cap, mid cap, large cap. And then there's additional detail below of which, uh, in this case, which funds or ETFs are rating where. And then below that, uh, the weights uh, in this particular portfolio. Um, so this could be, uh, you know, for you and your own portfolio and portfolio statements or your investment committee or your foundation uh, or your clients. Um, so these are printable reports that you can deliver to your clients. And if there's additional um, uh, information that you want or customizations you want, we can uh, uh, please let us know what those might be. And on this edit button here, uh, um, what you can see is you can change the weights there. Either you made a mistake or you want to test a different proportion. Um, the key again is use the same units so that the weights calculate appropriately. And, um, and then if you can, um, you can also delete uh, something from the portfolio uh, if you like. And then if you click on the double arrow under the index, you can see the exact um, uh, index, like the Barclays index on the right-hand side. Uh, this is the Barclays Ag index, which is the common index. All right, so that's, uh, and you can do the same thing. So this is by funds. You can do the same thing by a, you know, a mix of stocks. So on the next tab, we have the uh, great places to work strategy. Um, and so you can see the mix of uh, pillar ratings, so one of the drivers, this is a very high wealth pillar rating, you can see that 72%. That means employees are um, uh, getting paid fairly and that uh, in general, and that the CEO pay uh, is in check. Employees are happy in their jobs, they're able to save, and generally have high uh, employee satisfaction and engagement. Um, and you can see the other pillars um, uh, and their pillar scores. Um, so you can see the shift of the rating distributions shift higher here. So we are hip rating the great places to work. Um, and that's a mix of large caps, mid caps, and global uh, equities. Uh, and again, lower below, you can see the distribution of um, hip scores and, um, and how they compare to the benchmark lower below by asset class. All right, so we're really excited to share this with you uh, and appreciate all your uh, questions. Um, the, here's a question that's come in is, is this designed for an individual retail operator, uh, individual retail investor by yourself? Yes, um, so this is meant to be usable by individuals and advisors and fund managers. So uh, we're trying to make it as easy to understand and communicate as possible. Uh, uh, we're working on a retail pricing scheme to make it more affordable for individual investors. So let us know what you want and what would be useful and uh, it'd be helpful to get your pricing feedback on that too. Um, uh, somebody asked to tell us more about the collaboration with Open Invest. Yeah, so as you know, Open Invest today can um, uh, invest in a diversified portfolio of stocks and also of green bonds like the Calvert Green Bond Fund. Uh, a, a, what they'll be turning on in Q1 is the ability to invest in HIP strategies and HIP portfolios. Um, so that's what we can tell you so far. Uh, more coming soon, but that will be live by the end of Q1. Another uh, question is around uploading a CSV or Excel worksheet. Um, we will be releasing that um, functionality uh, about mid-year. In the meantime, if there's something you need, we can do it on our side here. So um, it's a short-term, lower-tech solution. 
Uh, all right, so more in-depth question here about if I'm a mainstream investor seeking to maximize returns and all things equal uh, create ESG value. Can you compare financial returns uh, versus ESG by company and by portfolio? Yeah, so we're uh, working on building that in to show you how to optimize a variety of portfolios versus financial returns. So there's some additional work that we need to do on our side to do that, but that's uh, coming soon. Um, it'll definitely be here in 2018. Um, um, all right, and then can 401k sponsors use HIP ratings for their overall investment menu lineup? Yes. That's a great way to engage your 401k plan and 401k um, uh, company, uh, provider of your 401k in doing it. Um, so bring this up. And uh, there's a um, toolkit on As You Sow um, called the 401k toolkit uh, that Timothy of uh, Green Retirement and Rob Thomas of Social K and uh, HIP Investor have co-authored uh, for some hints and uh, guidance on how to do that. All right, so we want to be mindful of everybody's time um, and um, some more technology coming soon, more features coming soon, and we're really excited to uh, share this with you. So, um, so thanks uh, for all your great questions. Please send us in feedback on how you think the uh, portal could be even better or functionality that you want. It's very, um, uh, it's very helpful to us. So we've answered your questions along the way, and um, and so before what uh, you know, um, uh, so what we're seeking to do here is to blend impact and quantitative measures of impact with factors that drive, on average, lower risk and stronger return, and that we um, uh, uh, and that you can use that in your portfolio. And that you can uh, explore subscribing to the HIP Investor uh, portal. You can invest in the HIP strategies available on Folio and Schwab and soon on Open Invest. You can invest in portfolios uh, as well uh, that we built using the HIP ratings, including on your 401k. And you can read and share uh, the HIP book. Um, so these are ways to engage together. So we're always uh, here and open for your questions. Please feel free to email me, paul at hipinvestor.com or any of the HIP team, Onindo uh, in Chicago, David here in San Francisco, uh, Nick and Zach uh, in Santa Cruz in LA. So we have uh, national uh, you know, uh, offices. And, um, and so we're really excited to hear feedback, uh, hear what you want and you need. Uh, give us feedback on what's working and what's not. We know we need to improve the speed of the portal. We're working on that. And, um, uh, and then we'll send a uh, downloadable presentation to you as well. And when you sign up for the free trial, the initial trial is 14 days. If there's, uh, you know, uh, applications you want to use it for, you know, you want to help your 401k get more uh, engaged, uh, you have a family foundation you want to work with, let us know, and we'll work with you on extending the trial. So, um, so appreciate you joining us today, and um, uh, please, you know, let's not use this as just one webinar, but as continuing conversation. I uh, want to thank uh, the HIP team for doing an awesome job of producing ratings that Fabian and Onindo and Wontong and Nick do every day. Uh, the building of this portal uh, through the leadership of David Sugar, so he's done a fantastic job of bringing this together, and I'll continue to get more sophisticated. Um, and then of working with clients that Zach and I and the team does. So um, look forward to continue our conversation. Thanks very much for your attention today. Let's keep the conversation going and hope you can find ways to engage with um, HIP and uh, we'll look forward to continuing to uh, work with you. All right. Thanks very much. Have a great day.